Hi there, my amateur decorating friends. You're standing in my dining room. We're actually going to reupholster the seat cushions and we're going to chalk paint the chairs. This is the original chair that came with the table. Yes, it handled the rub and buff pretty well. So now I move on to the additional chairs and I think I found my way through it. Hi everyone, welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. Now this is exactly how I felt the first time that I posted the video about my dining room chairs. I was so excited. I even made up a song about it. But little did I know that polyurethane was on the attack. And with my poor lighting in my dining room, I had no idea that the color of my white chairs was now yellow. Well, I made up my mind with the first sign of warm weather, I was going to paint them. Now this time I'm using an electric spray gun along with my homemade chalk paint recipe. And yes, you can use your homemade chalk paint recipe in an electric spray gun. You just have to do it a whole lot faster. So here's my modification. I used one part plaster of Paris to three parts paint and a whole lot of water. You want to make sure that the viscosity is right. In other words, how well does the paint drip through the viscosity cup determines how well it's going to spray onto my chairs. Now I've had my spray gun for a couple of years now, but you can get them at Harbor Freight for as little as $16.99. That's perfect for a one-time project or multiple projects if you keep it clean. It comes with this cup and when the paint doesn't drip through you need to add more water okay here's our second test dip in the cup there you go and you should time it in seconds how long it takes to empty the cup so this looks pretty good to me i poured my mixture into my paint container and of course i used a funnel this one is from the dollar tree I inserted the pump, twisted on the cap, and did a few test sprays to see if everything was okay. Now I have a bucket of warm water sitting over on the side. I'm sorry you cannot see that. So I did refill the paint container twice. And in between those refills, I rinsed out the container and cleaned out the suction tube. Because if I'm going to use that plaster of Paris, it can get hard and clog it up. But I didn't have that problem because I kept the tube clean. And thanks to this inexpensive spray gun, I had eight chairs repainted in about 45 minutes. Woohoo! Now to be on the safe side, I let the chairs stay in the backyard for about 45 minutes. They were dry for sure. And then I applied a Minwax Paste Wax in natural. They also have it in dark at Lowe's. All you simply do is wipe it on, allow 30 minutes, and then you're good to go. Put your cushions back onto your chairs and place them in your dining room. I'm hoping this will be all gone by the time the yard man comes back. Now I want my spray gun to last, so I cleaned it as well as its components immediately after I finished using it. Now I did not use the rub and buff metallic wax, I distressed the chairs instead. No need to tell me, distressing was a bad choice. Now beautiful metallic furniture or mirrored pieces just will not go away when it comes to furniture. So they are here to stay in all kinds of colors. Now Lowe's carries three of the metallic finishes in a 32 ounce container. They have the silver, the seashell, and the champagne. Three of my favorites and a great combination. Now you can also find them online, but they're probably gonna cost you about $46, $47 for a 32 ounce container. But I tell you one thing, you can get so much use out of just one container. Online you're gonna find them in every color from gold, champagne, harbor blue, pear, pewter, brown, scarlet red, silver, copper, and even a pearl finish. There is a top coat paste that they recommend that you use with this metallic paint, only if the piece is in a high traffic area. Well, my chairs are in my dining room and we probably use them at least, what, three times a year? Which is why the seat cushions are cracking. 
from the one or two times a year that we sit on the chairs. Has that happened to you before? That would be so embarrassing to have a guest stand up from your chair and have the seat cushion crumbling on their pants or skirt. That would be so embarrassing. So I had to do a seat cushion makeover really quick. So why measure? Just take one of them with you to Hobby Lobby. And yeah, I managed to find some fabric, very inexpensive fabric for $22, a yard and a half. And I got an additional 40% off. Yay! Okay, so we're back home now. I removed the rest of the seat cushions from the chairs and sometimes the screw will not fall out. I just put a small piece of tape over that area so it'll catch it in case it falls. Now, I didn't want to put my new fabric on top of the old crumbling fabric, so I removed it. And I replaced it with something that was neutral, but had a little tiny bit of bling. There are silver threads in this canvas fabric. This yard and a half fabric is the perfect size to do four chairs. I folded it in half and then into quarters. And then I made my four separate cuts. Now I'm simply placing painter's tape in the direction of the grain line. That way they all flow in the same direction. Now what I've learned is that if we're not going to use it, it needs to go. So these distressed chairs are going to someone who is totally in love with them. When it's my first time dealing with a new type of painting, I'll do a test run. On the left is my old distress, on the right is the metallic paint. Now, if you've seen the first video, you know I alternate it from side to side, but this is a way that you can get it done really, really quick. Just go ahead and staple down one side and then go to the opposite side. Use your pliers to pull it tautly. If you've got problems with your joints or even just holding things tightly and they don't slip out of your fingers, I love to use pliers. This helps me out a whole lot. And be careful that you don't put a staple in the hole where the screws are going to be placed when you put the seat cushion back on top of the chair. Now my stapler does an amazing job off camera, but when I'm on camera, it always acts up. So this is why I'm using the hammer. Now I do go back and fill in all of the spaces in between the staples. That way I have one continuous seam. But so far it looks like everything is nice and tight. Now my seat cushion has angles, so this is why when I come to the corner that I tuck in a little bit of the fabric, just to kind of make sure it's pulled tautly. And then I make that napkin fold at the very corner. Now if your cushion is perfectly rectangular, then you probably will not have to do this. But for me, for now, this is my way of getting it done. And like I said, the pliers are definitely a must when you don't want to strain your wrists or your fingers. I tell you, the stapler is just so defiant on camera. Now, I don't like strings hanging from underneath my chair, so I cut away the excess fabric. I can't believe it. The temperature has dropped from the 80s into the 50s. So I'm going inside to get my fleece jacket. I am determined to finish this project today. This was perfect. I found some old thin fabric in my fabric tote. Gave it a quick cut and stapled it to the back of each seat cushion. Just staple the center and the corner of the lining to the bottom of the seat cushion. Now, whenever I try a new paint, I always do a test run. You know, just maybe one light coat to see how the chairs are going to look. I love it. Just the perfect amount of glam for these chairs. And that way I can add all of the eccentric glam to the accessories. I decided to tone down the distressed area on the top of the chairs with a little bit of primer. This tool bench paintbrush is my absolute favorite. I love it. There's no shedding. There's always a new one on standby in my garage. They're about $5 at Lowe's. Now, I must admit, I am in love with this paint. Just a little bit has phenomenal coverage and it gives such a lustrous look. It dries very quickly and you could probably have your four chairs done in about an hour. It's amazing. I love the coverage and I love the quality. Don't you just love that finish? A little music please, Maestro. 
Now this seashell metallic paint looks stunning on top of this chalk paint. It's just making it go to a whole new level. I love it. So I hope you'll give something like this a try. Now I'm looking for opportunities to purge and having a table that seats up to 10 to 12 people in the dining room, well, that's where I'm going to start. I'm removing both of the center leaves and from here on out, it is going to be set for four people. I can always add those back whenever it is needed. Now I am loving the metallic paint. It has a hammered look because of the chalk paint underneath it, but I also love the way it complements the metallic fibers in the fabric. So now I can add my pops of color with throw pillows and an amazing window treatment. And I can also add a pop of color with a beautiful rug. Now I don't do upholstery professionally. Obviously you can tell that. So I'm on a quest to get a few donated pieces as well as some old pieces of furniture around my house updated this summer. I love some of the modern finishes that are out there, but I don't want to be too far over the edge with the bling, but I want to keep it traditional with an edge. So guys, please stay tuned to this six week series. I'm going to be joined by some of my favorite YouTubers. And today I have Michelle from Design Fun. I can't wait to see what she did to her kitchen island. And as we go in and out over the course of the next five or six weeks, you're going to see some updates to several pieces of furniture in their homes. So I hope you'll stay tuned and subscribe if you have not already subscribed to my channel. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today and please turn on your notification so you don't miss a single video. All of the participants will be put together on a playlist and just click the playlist in the information box. Thanks a lot for watching and as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.